this case I am presenting for two reasons. One, it involves both skin and neurology. In both specialities, I have some little knowledge. Secondly, it's very rare. Once in 50,000 or 100,000 cases we see. So I thought, the third point of interest is, I have been following this child from the age of four years when she first came to public health center until she died about six months ago due to some kind of malignancy which we will see shortly. So, ataxia telangiectasia, the term itself self-explanatory ataxia, the patient has got cerebellar ataxia. Uh, it, she is not able to walk properly, mainly gait ataxia. Telangiectasia is a term which is used to denote dilated capillaries. See, we all see capillaries, they are dilated. You will see huge with capillaries. There are certain areas that you can look for. So, ataxia telangiectasia is a neurogenesis syndrome, neurodegenerative disorder, is a hereditary disorder, very rarely seen, also known as Lewy Bar syndrome. So, it's an inherited neurodegenerative disorder, affects many tissues and systems, telangiectasia, dilated capillaries, ataxic aid, prognosis of infection. Almost every second week they come with an infection, upper respiratory infection or lower any infection in the city, first person to get this infection will be these patients. Defective humor and children, I mean, that explains that. Increased risk of malignancies, that gives you the prognosis. Next. So it's an autosomal recessive disorder affecting both genders, 1 in 40,000 to 1 in 100,000. The gene detected to be ATM gene, it's named, located in the chromosome 11, Q20 to 23, and more than 100 ATM mutations have been discovered in ataxia telangiectasia patients. So the basic problems, immunodeficiency, so increased cyanopulmonary infections, abnormal cellular sensitivity to ionizing radiation, that is because of the tendency of the chromosomes to break on exposure to radiation or even sunlight. So they used to get skin cancers, basal cell epithelium and so on. And dramatically increased risk of malignancy of lymphocytes, especially lymphoma, leukemias and lymphomas more than any other uh, uh, malignancies. Next. Before going to this, let me uh, show you the patient so that you will be able to under uh, video for it. The child came to us when the child was four year old with difficulty in walking, with ataxia almost. And then you have been following up that case. The initial diagnosis, they gave some uh, dysgenesis or agenesis of cerebellum and so on. But we could see a uh, full screen for it. Just keep watching this. This child has got close it's a video taken by me, the quality may not be that good, it's not professional, but it, I think, serves the purpose for the presentation. You can see the nystagmus on the eyes. See the jerky movements to the left. And then you see the sclera, you see a lot of blood vessels, they're all telangiectatic. Normally, you don't get this kind of dilated capillaries in normal sclera. So she has got dilated capillaries, which will be seen better in a photograph, but this is for the nystagmus sake. She has got movements, difficult movements of the eyes. You should, they may also even have spin, but this girl have never had spin. She had only nystagmus on all sides, horizontal nystagmus. And then you can see in between the eyebrows, excess hair, there is hirsutism. They also have hirsutism. And then you can see excessive papillar lesions on both sides of the nose. They are also prone to get more of seborrheic dermatitis. So these are all clinical features which will point to this particular condition. We will see how she walks. Uh, shortly she will be walking. Her intelligence is very good. She was doing her BCom finally when she was, literally when she was dying. She came to me when she was four years in 1997. The one case that she followed up till death, death very unusual in our part of the country. This was taken recently, you know, about, about two, three years ago, when she was doing it, just joined her graduation. When she reached now it was 15 or 16. And then you can see grey hairs. She has greying of hairs. See this this is in coordination more on the left, right and left or than on the right. See the children of this is definitely positive on the left side. And then she was not dysautic, but at the end of her life, I think she definitely had dysarthria, secretor speech. 
full fledged full blown uh, cerebral syndrome. Sorry? What is the cause of this? I think because when she is walking, mainly the trunkal attacks here. Yeah. They don't have the incoordinates very minimal. Mainly trunkal attacks right? the middle, the whole body of the cerebral syndrome. See, she has the trunkal attacks yeah, more than anything else. And then when we have, we have in this case no doubt, when you have doubt, minimal cerebral or not, we always request them to do tandem walking. When you do that, they are not able to do that, brings out the cerebral attacks very clearly. See, we will, will, will denounce the trunkal attacks, we ask her to get up, she won't be able to do it, even if she does, she will have shaking of the body. Yes, she has mainly trunkal attacks. See, she's not able to stand. She keeps on moving up. She came to me. Yeah. So that's the case we have been following from uh, 1997 till last six months. That was one of the visits when she consulted me for her usual respiratory infection. The next day. So, clinically, we will see what are the things. I have not seen all the findings in this case, but generally, multiple telangiectasis, multiple dilated capillaries in sclera commonly, ear lobes and lobes, graying of hair, irregular pigmentation of skin in the areas, especially exposed, exposed to sun, caffeolase parts. Caffeolase parts are coffee brown color macules. Sir, excuse me. Sorry, uh, car number 2908. So, 2908. Yeah, Ford. Uh, no. Yeah, no, yeah. Three go. Okay. <coughs> Next slide. Other protein is usually they will have hypertrichosis and occasional gray hairs. Pyclodoma. is this is a term this explains. Black and white spots as the pepper and salt appearance of the exposed areas due to photosensitivity. Pyclioderma, loss of subcutaneous fat and sclerosis, rarely severe dermatitis, casually macules, vitiligo, acanthus, ingregans, and eczema. Basal cell pass trauma due to abnormal radio sensitivity. They are quite prone to get this because of their uh, unstable chromosomes. And cutaneous granuloma, secondary infections. Next. So this is a photograph of the same child. You can see the uh, this one taken with flash, so we are not able to see the dilated cap next one. Without flash, we learn by our mistakes. Without flash, the uh, dilated capillaries are brought out nicely. Next one. This is a very common appearance. This is not due to telangiectasis. Uh, telang this man, as usual, when we say we have no treatment, you know what they do? They go for it. Alternate. So this girl was given alternate medicine. I don't remember what exactly it was. Without meaning any uh, hardship to any other paramedical. She she had some alternate medicine, and then lost all her hair. And then I treated it with some minoxidil and local treatment. Next slide. She got back her hair. She was very happy. She didn't know that she is she she was getting her hair, but not the life. But anyway, she was transient, she was very happy, very happy. You can see even when, when there is the elevation, the hair comes back, it is usually grey. I don't know whether the grey of grey uh, grey hair due to telangiectasia or due to the treatment. Next slide. So neurologically, what do they have? The child is brought to initially, they don't get the cerebral love symptoms initially. They come with difficulty in walking and then growth failure. And then they develop ataxia around 12 months. Slowly progressive ataxia. Relentlessly progressive, there is no uh, stopping off. Trunkal attacks are predominant, as you have seen. Limb attacks are intention tremor, segment myoclonus appear later. In this case, she had intention tremor, nystagmus, but she never had myoclonic jerks. <coughs> progressive dystonia on stroop watch, not found in this case. Abnormal eye movements, I have seen, nystagmus. Epilepsy is a voluntary case, she never had. Limitation of upgaze, no, she never had. Transient stratosphere. I might have missed, she might have had on and off, but she came to me, I couldn't make out any screen. But she definitely had nystagmus. Next. In adults, usually it's progressive distal muscular atrophy, they have fasciculations. This is just for completion, say, proximal strength, relatively preserved. 
spinal cord, dorsal, and dorsal column involved, peripheral neuropathy. Her re reflexes were down. They were not normal. They were decreased. So probably she was developing peripheral neuropathy. Uh, she didn't need to, for us to diagnose that. Occasional seizures, she never had seizures. Cerebral cortex span, that is very important. No significant neuropsychological deficits or IQ defect. She was extremely good in her class. She was scoring 80 to 90 percent till her last exam. <coughs> Next. So this is about 10 to 15 percent of these people develop lymphoreticular malignancy. That is what probably uh, took her life away. T cell leukemias and lymphomas are more common than B cell tumors. This terminoma, gastric carcinoma, and other, other malignancies, liver carcinoma, retinoblastoma, and pancreatic carcinoma have been reported. But more commonly, lymphomas and leukemias. Recurrent of chronic sinus headache, they, they come every third week or fourth week, they come with the spread of infection. Recurrent chronic sinus headache, bronchitis, pneumonia, chronic, progressive bronchitis. This is another cause for death sometimes. They develop severe respiratory the infection and then cause the respiratory failure. Thymus is often absent of the, not only really thymus, generally the lymph nodes and the uh, tonsils, all the lymphoreticular system, they are not well developed. What are the tests you can do to, uh, usually clinically we will be able to diagnose it, but there are a few things. Lymphopenia, this is very important, serum alpha fetoprotein is definitely elevated, remarkably, remarkably elevated, that gives, the, uh, that gives you definite uh, point for diagnosing this. And Calcium embryonic antigen, not in all cases, some cases definitely. If you estimate the immunoglobulins, IgE, IgE, or IgG, they are decreased, indicating that they have immunity level is very low. Next. Failure to, uh, then you do the hypersensitivity reaction, they are all negative. You, you are not able to get hypersensitivity due to cellular immunity failure. Cellular radiosensitivity test and abnormal, some people, very, very small percentage of people, they do develop diabetes then GTT might be useful. Next. This is important. Neuroimaging, if you find when they develop full-fledged cerebellar uh, clinical symptoms, non-progressive cerebellar atrophy, definitely you will see that now. More extensive degenerations in adults like substantial agar, any degeneration, substantial agar, brain cerebral and spinal cord injury. Or no. Posterior column is especially noted in spinal cord. Cerebral cortex is fat, as I already told. Next. So in this case, what are the findings to sum up? 1996, MRI brain was normal, with normal cerebellum. And then we repeated 2007 MRI brain showed cerebellar, which I will show you right now. And then, then the investigation, taught serology, pertinent infections, normal limits, urine chromography, normal. 2002, thyroid function, normal, proper cellular scarcity, everything was normal. IG, IG, normal, IgG was reduced. Alpha fetoprotein was very high, 232, normal less than 16.3, it was very high. And 2006 repeat MRI, it, then only we, 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 could, we could really assign this case as a taxia, even though we had a suspicion. MRI brain to mild diffuse cerebellar atrophy, all the other tests were normal. This is her MRI, you can see the The cerebellum is almost atrophic, nothing. Cerebral atrophic cerebellum. Here also, you see, usually the number of folia we don't count in MRI, we count it only in CD. MRI will be like this only. But definitely in the, on the coronal section, you can see the atrophic cerebellum. 